I'm, I'm shocked at like how many times it comes up as a joke just because someone has a stain on their shirt or a woman's blouse is popped open and she doesn't realize it and someone will be like, oh, yeah, you're a world war malfunction. You're just sitting there going, oh, if you ever knew, you know, if you ever really knew what that meant. So when we ventured into this, we really had to come up with a spectacular idea. Every 20 seconds, every 30 seconds, let's see something new for the very first time. Multiple artists, multiple guests, multiple people, spectacle. I mean, that was just really our mandate going into it. Thursday before the game is really the only time the halftime has to rehearse. We had Jessica Simpson, we had Kid Rock, we had P. Diddy, we had 30,000 balloons, we had pyro, we had dancers, we had people coming off the rafters. It was a very difficult rehearsal. You know, after about the fourth hour, a couple of us left. This one needed a lot of work. I know that John Collins, who was our chief marketing officer when we got done with that, I mean, he wrote a letter to MTV citing a number of things that we wanted to have changed in the show. When we did the original rehearsal, there was conversation about um, a, a fake skirt that she would wear and that Justin would actually pull open the skirt and take off the skirt. So in rehearsal, um, they actually tried to rip open the skirt, which kind of went with the lyrics of the song. When we saw that in rehearsal, that was the first thing that was flagged within everyone's notes. So we killed it. After that note, I had to go back and check all the wardrobe. I went back into kind of Janet's dressing room and I sat with her stylist and her people and we were like, okay, this looks good, this looks great. So we looked at everything and um, thought that was the end of it. So the format of the halftime show, as written, started to play itself out. Our artists, one by one, do their song, you know, Kid Rock and P. Diddy, and everything was going really well, and then Janet kicked in, and everything was going really well. Justin was revealed, it was exciting, and literally, you're holding your breath for 12 minutes. My position up there at that time was sitting next to Mike Pereira, who was our director of officiating. And I'm busy doing something else, and he turns to me and he says, do you see what just happened? I said, what do you mean? He said, let me show you. When the song ended, um, we were all in the truck going like, yeah, we did it! He literally runs it back for me to show what took place. The phone rang. And it was the direct line from uh, Jim Steig. And I remember saying something to her to the effect, did you see just what happened? Our videotape operator went to play back the tape. And that's when we all were just like, did that just really happen? I then called, you know, the commissioner, who hadn't seen it either, and explained to him what was going on. You know, we were all shuffling, trying to figure out what just happened, what just happened. You know, because A, no one had ever seen that piece of wardrobe. B, when did they even discuss doing that? To her, it was a total shock. Uh, he said, Sally, did you, did you know? Did you plan that? I said, Jim, no, of course not. Of course I didn't. You know, you could tell everybody was looking at you like it was your fault. It was your fault. And it wasn't our fault. I trust them totally when everybody says they had no idea of anything that was going on. And in the meantime, Janet left. And, you know, she got in a car and she left. So we couldn't even say, Janet, what happened? I didn't know at that time that that moment was going to change history. Janet Jackson's song, All For You, took on a whole new meaning during halftime of the Super Bowl when her right breast was exposed. Janet, that's Miss Jackson if you're nasty, has admitted her halftime, half-funnel nudity was her idea, but still insists more flesh was exposed than originally planned. The FCC has opened an investigation which could result in millions of dollars of fines to the network. We will change our policies, our people, and our processes to ensure that this entertainment is of far more appropriate quality for the Super Bowl game. 
My, my opinion to this day is, is that her stylist decided this would be something cool. It was a private meeting. No one was in the dressing room except for Janet and Justin and I think the wardrobe stylist. I think Justin went along with it just because he didn't, you know, again, it went with the lyrics. I don't believe it was ever intended for her to expose anything. I think it just didn't work because it wasn't rehearsed and it didn't work. It was self-consumed and, and thinking about, and not thinking about other people. I'm still waiting for my apology letter. <laughs> Frankly, I am still waiting for that apology letter, but not just me, everyone is. It's in everybody's consciousness now that that term wardrobe malfunction never existed until then, and now it's a word that everybody recognizes and know where it comes from, and it's kind of the power of the Super Bowl.